Hi guys, this is RN Daily Dose, formerly as Indai RN, and here I am to give you some helpful tips to maximize your study for the exam. And before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. Free World Questions an adolescent client is brought to the emergency department after being in a serious motor vehicle crash. The client is undergoing cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The nurse calls the family to inform them to come to the hospital and a family member asks how the client is doing. Which is an example of the ethical principle of beneficence when responding to the client's family. 1. He is critically ill and we are caring for his needs. 2. His heart has stopped and we are attempting to revive him. 3. I don't know how he is doing but you need to come. 4. I will have the healthcare provider talk to you once you arrive. Answer. 1. He is critically ill and we are caring for his needs. Explanation. Beneficence is the ethical principle of doing good. It involves helping to meet the clients including the family emotional needs through understanding. This can involve withholding information at times. Stating that the client is critically ill and is being cared for meets the ethical principle of veracity telling the truth, but also avoids overwhelming the family before they travel to the hospital. The nurse does not want the family to be too distressed to process the situation and arrive safely. Option 2, this is a true statement but it is being given abruptly to the family without support or gradual adjustment. It might be so distressing that they cannot travel to the hospital safely. Option 3, this is not a true statement and violates the principle of veracity. It will do nothing to help the family and might even cause them alarm that a nurse there is not informed about what is going on with their child. Option 4, although this is an option, it does nothing to deal with the situation and the family's needs adequately. It also passes the buck to another provider, and even though this provider can speak to them, the nurse should deal with the family's immediate needs at this point. Once they arrive, the health care provider is usually the one to tell family members about the client's prognosis. Educational Objective The ethical principle of beneficence means doing good. It can involve not saying all known information immediately but delaying notification until appropriate support is in place. The nurse is conducting a home visit to assess an elderly client with advanced failure who lives alone. When the nurse asks about sodium intake, the client becomes angry and says, I'm so tired of people telling me what to do. I'm going to eat what I want, so leave me alone. Which of the following is the most appropriate response by the nurse? 1. I can tell that you want me to go, so I will call in a few days to see how you are doing. 2. I know you are frustrated with losing control of your life. 3. It sounds like you are angry, tell me what's bothering you. 4. Okay, I'll just check your blood pressure and then go. Answer. 3. It sounds like you are angry, tell me what's bothering you. Explanation. The client exhibits anger, which is likely a sign of grief due to loss of control from illness. However, the source of the client's anger is not clear. Therefore, further assessment is now indicated to understand more about the client's feelings and perceptions. Verbalizing feelings may also help the client to move past anger toward acceptance of the loss. The nurse's statement, it sounds like you are angry reflects the nurse's perception of the client's emotion and will allow the client to clarify feelings. The open-ended probing statement, tell me what's bothering you, facilitates assessment of the client's concerns without making any assumptions about them. This approach will promote accurate assessment of the client's needs and concerns. It will also prevent premature closure, incorrect assumptions, and escalation of the client's anger. 
Option 1 This client's angry response likely indicates an unmet need. Further assessment is indicated if the client is willing to talk. This response shuts the door on further assessment. Option 2, the nurse is making an assumption that the source of the client's frustration is loss of control. This assumption may cause the nurse to draw inaccurate conclusions about the client's concerns, contributing to further escalation of anger. Option 4, this response will probably diffuse the situation, but further assessment of the client's concern is more important. If the client remains angry and the nurse attempts to take blood pressure after being told to leave, the client may become angrier, putting the nurse's safety at risk. Educational Objective The client with serious illness who exhibits anger may be experiencing anxiety, grief, or fear. The nurse should remain at a safe distance while attempting to defuse the situation. Assess the client's concerns using a calm, non-threatening approach. Reflect the client's statements and try to understand the client's feelings, perceptions, and beliefs to address the priority problem. The nurse is giving report to a licensed practical nurse LPN who will be helping to monitor a client who just had a total thyroidectomy. What will the nurse emphasize as most important to report immediately? 1. Elevated blood pressure. 2. Heart rate irregularity. 3. Low oxygen saturation. 4. Noisy breathing. Answer. 4. Noisy breathing. Explanation. Respiratory distress is a life-threatening complication of thyroid surgery that occurs when swelling in the surgical area at the base of the neck compresses the airway, strider and or or difficulty breathing in the client who has had thyroid surgery should be reported immediately to the registered nurse, and a rapid response should be activated. Option 1, although elevated blood pressure is important to monitor, it is a less serious symptom than strider. Option 2, an irregular heart rate is a less serious symptom than strider, and it may be a baseline finding in the client with hyperthyroidism. Option 3, although low oxygen saturation is a sign of impending airway compromise, it is also commonly seen in all types of postoperative clients, making it a less specific sign of airway obstruction than noisy breathing in the thyroidectomy client. Educational Objective Airway swelling is a life-threatening complication of thyroid surgery. Signs of respiratory distress such as strider and dyspnea require rapid intervention. 